All right, well, that's the uh, roundup of apps. So at this point in the evening, it is my great pleasure to uh, introduce us to uh, Jenny Wall. So uh, Jenny is uh, Jenny's the elephant in the room. Well, her business is the elephant in the room. And um, so a bit about her, yeah, she's, uh, she jumped out of the uh, employee aeroplane, I guess, without a parachute uh, about four years ago. Uh, and she's created a uh, successful coaching business and uh, she provides uh, coaching programs. She's got a signature uh, program that, uh, that she uh, uses and a framework to help with clarity, structure, and process with, um, with the businesses. So tonight she's gonna to be sharing uh, uh, three lessons for building a six-figure business. So uh, I did hear at the beginning there that uh, getting to the six figures is, a, um, is certainly something that uh, some of us want. Um, and in fact, I dare say that some of the strategies that work to get to six figures uh, will also help you get to the uh, seven-figure mark as well, too. So it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, you all to Jenny Walk and uh, to hand over to you. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you so much. Can everyone hear me okay? Is the sound okay? Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, appreciate, Nick, the opportunity to come and have a chat to everyone today. Um, Becoming a business owner was not my dream, but it became my reality, as you said, four years ago, and I'm really excited to share that story. Um, and so some of the some of the lessons that I've learned along the way to grow my business, the ups, the downs, and all the things that we go through when we're starting a business. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm just going to share my screen, um, and we're going to start off with. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to pop it in the chat, obviously, as Nick said, um, and I'm happy to stop and start. I do want this to be an interactive session, so feel free to reach out and, uh, and ask any questions that you may need to. So funny, uh, starting a business for me was, as I said, not a dream, but it became a reality about four, three and a half, four years ago. And I'm not sure if the people in the, on the call are wanting to be business owners, but starting a business can be daunting, especially when you never intended to be a business owner. And I know I've spoken to a number of the people on the call before, and from what it sounds like, there are a number of people who've started their business by accident. Now, that doesn't mean that you necessarily never wanted to be one, but it's come about in an accidental way. So it may have been, as Nick said earlier, redundancy. It may have been the GFC closed your business down and then you had to find something else to do. Or it may have been you just had all the stars aligned on a day and you had to take an opportunity and you went from being an employee to a business owner overnight going, what the heck do I do? So for the people who do own businesses and most of us do on this call, what I'd love you to share in the chat, if you wouldn't mind, is what was the biggest challenge you faced when you first started your business? Happy to talk about it, yell it out if you want to, but if you're not, pop it in the chat, let me know what's the biggest um, challenge that you faced when you first started your business? Who would like to share? Working on my own, Victoria, such a common conversation, that kind of feeling of isolation. Time management, yes. Promotion, getting the word out, getting people to know. Yes, and knowing what the heck I was doing, Nick, I feel you there. Um, finding clients, definitely. Getting people, yeah, so a lot of that's about promotion. I love that. What a great one, Ian. Family not understanding why you wanted to do it. Such a huge thing. So all of those things that came about and the big ones, I'm going to talk about a couple of those. But before we start on the presentation I'm going to talk about, I'd love to talk a little bit about that one that you said, Ian, about family not understanding why. That is one of the biggest conversations I have with business owners who find themselves, you know, unexpectedly owning a business. Particularly, I mean, I've got people who've been LM, MLM business owners who started as a hobby and then left their job to create that and got a lot of pushback by their family about why they're doing that and the security and the lack of and the risk associated with it. But the reality is all businesses and everything we do has risk. The key difference that we find that when it's our business or not, we're holding the risk for our success versus relying on someone else to hold that risk for us. So I don't know, uh, there's a lot of people I think the same age. I grew up in Victoria in the days of the pyramid um, banking scandal where lots of people put all their money into a bank or that at that point a bank or a uh, building society because they were getting massive returns and they threw their money at this, this organisation thinking that they knew what they were doing and that they would make them lots of money. And what happened very quickly is that people who weren't managing their money ended up losing it for everybody. So the one thing I, when I talk to people about how do I get my family to understand is I always say to them is owning a business or being an employee, the risks are the same. What's different is who owns the risk and who has control over the risk. 
And what's a wonderful opportunity about being a business owner is that we do have control with how we actually manage our business. We get to control the decisions that we make, how we spend our money, how much we get paid and how much effort and time we want to put into it. Those are things that you cannot do when you're working for somebody else. In most cases, some jobs allow that flexibility, but they generally come at some other cost. So I love that. And Victoria, great call about anxiety about getting enough money. That unfortunately is one of the perennial issues in business when you first start, unless you've got some really good systems in place. And I know Nick talks a lot about the systems and I'll talk a little bit about, about how we can do that in a minute. So before I continue anymore, I'd like to share a little bit about who I am because there are a number of people who don't know who I am. So I started my life um, many, many years ago as an Air Force officer. It was actually not the first job I did. My first was actually running a martial arts club. And then I joined the Air Force. And I did that because, you know, it was what you did. I got offered a job and I thought I should do the safe, secure path by becoming a, an Air Force officer. The interesting thing about that is two months earlier, my martial arts instructor had said to me, Jimmy, do you want to run a martial arts club? I've got one ready. You've been teaching it. You've been running it for a while. We'd like to offer you the franchise. But at the time, I took the opportunity of the safe, the, op the safe opportunity. I joined the Air Force rather than taking that risky path of running my own business. I was 22 at the time and I didn't really know what being an entrepreneur was. So I went on my path to become an Air Force officer. Over the last 25 years, I've done a range of roles from, you know, obviously military service through to running uh, major events for government and being a sales director for a company um, selling a whole range of learning and development tools. So I've had a very diverse range of businesses and, and experiences. But three and a half years ago, I found myself in a job that I absolutely loved. In fact, four years ago. And in fact, I thrived on it. I was kicking goals. I was hitting on my targets. I had great clients. And then I realized the company didn't love me as much as I loved the company. And when I realized that everything changed, I realized that I couldn't live my life in this company that was slowly but surely kind of pulling away at my own self-esteem and who I wanted to be. And so I left. All of the other circumstances surrounded that. And I found myself in Barcelona, as you do when you decide you don't want to be an employee anymore. You go to Barcelona. So I had a four-week training program over there called Mind Valley University. It was the first one that they ran four years ago. And I met some incredible people who were all passionate about owning their business. But what I realized is all of them had started in this space of going, I'm really great at healing, or I'm really great as a coach, or I'm really great as an IT guy, or I'm really great as a photographer. And they were fabulous in their jobs. But then they had to learn how to run it as a business. And so I found myself in this, in this four-week program talking to people about the challenges they found, what, we, what, they were, um, what they were doing, what they weren't doing. And I found myself being able to unpack and unravel some of the challenges they were having simply by listening and observing. And at that moment, I realized that was my role, to become the elephant in the room and to ask those questions, to raise awareness to what people were doing. So that, that led me to a whole range of incredible things like being part of a compilation book with 36 women from around the world about overcoming adversity and, and you know, taking the leap of faith. I got to spend a weekend with Lisa Nichols at one of her very first masterminds learning about how she runs mastermind events and how she runs her business and got incredible insight. So for the last four years, what I've been doing is essentially learning. I get every day to work with clients to learn how they run businesses and unpack people's challenges. And along the way, um, I've been very successful and got some incredible contracts to allow, allow me to live the lifestyle and create an environment that suits me. But what I realized, and this is the biggest thing about business, no matter whether you're earning $50 a week or $5,000 a week or $100,000 a week, everybody gets stuck in this tangled mess of business. And I call it the messy middle. So it's that period between knowing that what you want to do and that idea towards that long-term goal of success, whatever success looks like for me, for you, sorry, we get stuck in that point in the middle where, you know, something comes up and we have to pivot or something comes up and things fail, or we just don't, not really sure what we're doing and we feel like we're making no progress. And so that's what I really want to share tonight is the three lessons that I've learned, the biggest lessons that helped me untangle that messy middle to allow me to grow at each stage of my business. Because the first thing we need to recognize is our business is a, is a constant evolving being. So I talk about my business as a thing. I talk about it as a, who it wants to hang out with, the type of people it likes, the type of music it likes even, what it likes to kind of, 
you know, do and see and the types of music, uh, types of books it wants to read. And I think about it as a thing. And so therefore we go, okay, well, how do we make that feel comfortable? How do we get that to thrive? And as we keep growing our business, we have to kind of find new ways to do it to pivot. So the very first lesson I want to share tonight is consider what type of business you want from the very start before you even open the doors. So when I started my business, a lot of my colleagues were saying to me, just become a sole trader, get your ABN and just, you know, work away. And eventually at some point you'll get big enough and you'll want to become a company. Whereas I sat back and said, you know what? I know this business is going to be successful. I have faith in my skill and ability. I have faith in what I'm going to learn over the next couple of years. And in fact, I'm going to set myself up as a company. So even before I opened my doors, I incorporated as a company on the 3rd of August in 1997. And that was my, so 1997, 2017, Ooh, go back 20 years. Um, and so at that time, I realized that's what I wanted. I needed to set my business up for success. Now, why did I do that, you ask? Well, I did that because I recognized that I needed to put in place the structures and the system and the mindset of what a company was going to become, not who I was now. And what this comes from is a very simple kind of idea. When you own a company or you run a company, there are three choices for you. The first, you can be an employee in your company. And what an employee in your company does is they go to work every day, they serve customers, they do the paperwork, they do the operations, and they actually manage the business as it runs. But what that also means, I might own the company, but I can never take more than three or four weeks leave because the company depends on me. I can't, I can't go on holiday for six months. I can't just wait around, you know, and, and just have a day off because the business doesn't run just like employees would. So a lot of people start their mind, their, their company with this employee mindset. I have to be on the tools. I need to be doing this. And we often all start that place. And then we move into the second piece, which is the operator. And the operator gets a little bit sad when we start to realize I don't want to be on the tools anymore. I don't actually want to be doing the minutia of the detail anymore. And we start to think of new and innovative ways that we can deliver our service, like online courses, through webinars, through Zoom, through subscription models, as Nick talked about earlier. And we actually actually elevate our role. So as an operator, I've got, I can take a couple of days off here and there, but somebody still needs to manage the team. I still need to pop in and out. I've got to spend more time there, but I can probably take a month off or maybe two, and the business will keep operating. But the one that we all thrive to, the one that we often want to aspire to is the owner. And the owner is where you have freedom. So if you started your business like I did to create freedom in my life, the goal is to become an owner. And as an owner, we step out of the business and our job is to actually manage the business, monitor the business and nurture the business. So if you think about this as kind of that grandparent that who, who is the, you know, the patriarch or matriarch of the family, we make sure everybody's okay. We don't get involved in the nitty gritty. We don't get involved in the daily arguments. We just step back. Now, what's wonderful about when you start a business and you can create a six figure, seven figure, eight figure business at each of these levels. But what, in, what, what it impacts is the freedom that you have in your business. And that's really important. When we start running a business, deciding do I just want to actually be on the tools I've got a lot of clients who are healers a lot of times clients who are personal trainers I'm a coach who loves talking to people so there'll always probably be an operator in me I'd like to step out as an owner and probably in a couple of years time that will be my goal but my short-term goal probably five years is to actually be an operator and I'm really comfortable there I can have a range of tools that require me to be in the business. I can set up some services and some, um, some products that don't require me in the business. But essentially, I like to play in the business. So I'm going to ask you, when you started your business, did you, want to, did you think about being an employee or did you actually aspire to be an operator or an owner? So if you'd like to share that in the chat, I'd love to know. I'll open the chat again. Great, employee, owner, owner. So I love, yep, yeah, perfect. And that idea is quite different, operator. And a lot of people want to generally sit in that, what I would call a level two or a middle business. I used to put numbers to it, but now I just think we just talk about transition. Yes, Jane, I love it that you love to talk to. Awesome. Wanting to escalate to an owner, beautiful. 
Yes, Nick, you and I are very similar in that respect. We wanted to be this owner, but we started, we love the tool so much. We spent our time there and then we get out and then we get back in and then we get out and then we get back in so much. So what's awesome is if you now think about your business and imagine you could wave a wand and say, I'm going to structure my business from the very first time I open the doors in the way that I want to grow into, not what I want, what, not what I am now. And so what this is called, or what I call this, is designing your business. So rather than just becoming an accidental business owner or falling into business or even just deciding to start a company or a business, we actually design the business from the foundations. So we look at what is the best structure for the business. I even drew up and I have in one of my notebooks from three years ago, an organizational chart of what my company was going to look like in five years time. So at the time, my name was on every single one of those roles. But the idea is over time, I can start releasing myself from the roles that I don't want to do. I now have a bookkeeper who does my books because I don't want to be in the minutiae of doing that every day. But, I, I, but I'm still the financial controller. So I still have that role. And I, I have a, a, an amazing um, assistant, Macy, who supports me with my social media because I don't need to be the marketing coordinator anymore. I can have someone else do that. But when we design our business from scratch, and this is one of the biggest lessons that I learned, I, when I first started, I was kind of playing around and about six months into it, I said, let's get serious. Let's look at what the business is going to be in the future. Build what we want to become, not what we are. Does that make sense to everybody? And this is where technology is so important because your structure and your systems, even things down like to zero. I'll tell you a really funny story. Someone who now looks at business systems and models is for the very, yes, no, you don't always need funds, Victoria. So that's a really good point. And I'll raise that later, if I may, about needing funds to set up your business and your structure. Let's talk about that. I'll raise that um, at the end, if that's okay. Is that when we think about designing our business, something like zero or MIOB, I started the company trying to do my books kind of the old school way. And I didn't really adopt um, a bookkeeping system early on. But what I found is when I find, and I got a really big rush of clients early on because I had a good network and I connected. And so I was able to get a lot of clients in that first six to nine months. And then I had to go back and do that reconciliation. So I learned like the worst way you should ever do it is I kind of waited and waited and put it off and put it off and went, oh my God, don't do this. Had I thought about it from the start, I'd put in a system. It doesn't have to be at zero or my but it could be an Excel spreadsheet. If you put in a system in place online, Airtable, there's some amazing tools. And I know Nick has talked previously about some great online, um, online uh, finance tools and bookkeeping tools that you can support your business. Having those systems up front and early means that you're setting yourself up when you don't have stress, when you're not under pressure, when you're not worrying about, do I have time to do it? It's done when you're ready. And what it does is it sets you up to for success from the day you start. So what I call this is about saying, build your structure based on what you will be and not what you are now. Now, you don't have to go from today to be a multinational. We can do a staged approach. What do we want to look like in a year? What do we want to look like in three years? What do we want to look at five years? In fact, I was working with a, an amazing um, fashion brand or who have a not-for-profit last week doing some pro bono work, and they're going through this scale-up phase. They're an entirely online business, structured for online. They run very lean, and they're looking to see how do we actually restructure our business to support our growth online but still have space to grow into. So we build a structure and create a structure around what they're going to look like and then looked at the roles that they have to fill now and what they can use online tools, supporting, and what they need for staff. So they suddenly got relief and clarity about their growth pattern and where they can scale to because they had the right foundations. So it's like building a house and not having a concrete block or not having the good foundations. If you don't do it right from the start, you're constantly having to patch it up and, re and rebuild it. And it takes more time and more money in the future. Does that make sense to everyone? Awesome. Cool. So the next thing about that is designing your business, and this is where it's really critical, deciding up front, are you going to be an online business, an offline business, or a hybrid of that? So in the same way that when we just think about this, the scale of the business that we want, when we think about how we're going to deliver our services, so getting clarity around how do I share my offer with somebody? Am I sharing it face-to-face? -face? Is Jane and I going to have conversations on Zoom and in person all the time because that's what we love? Or are we actually going to just scale it to be an online course? 
And I have an amazing client at the moment who's doing that. She just wants to, she has, um, has spent many, many years doing face-to-face -face, um, consulting work. And now she wants to deliver her program online. Her goal is to create legacy and scale. And she knows she can't do that in person. So we're currently working out how she wants to structure her business to build her online program and all the systems that she needs to support that. And so that's where we talk about the architecture. And then I hand it over to a builder for someone to help her actually build the framework for that. So thinking about upfront, what structures do your business need? What platforms and resources does it require to deliver your service? And this is where Nick mentioned really early on in our conversation about the recurring income challenge that he's doing. And it's a perfect opportunity if you're even thinking about going online before you, you know, to dip your toes in the water to, have, to join that challenge. I think it's day two or day three, Nick, that you're on today. Day two? Yep, day two. So tomorrow's day three. So that challenge gives you that opportunity to start building the right foundations and getting that knowledge now before the pressure is on to have to do it because you can't deliver face-to-face -face anymore. One of my favorite stories about this transition and building structure is a, a couple that I met about three years ago when I was speaking at an event in, in Fiji. I get to go to very cool places, thankfully. And these lovely ladies, so uh, Chris and um, Leanne, I think the lady's name is, I always forget her name, I can see her hair. She, um, when she was 25, she was doing an incredible work um, and she was actually going, going really strongly in her business face-to-face -face meetings and she actually suffered, I think she got a tick or some injury and as a result was uh, um, unable to move, unable to do anything except put a pen in her mouth and move her head. And so she's at home having a 25, not able to make an income, not able to do anything. And she decided that she was going to learn to trade shares. So she just sat at home and traded shares every day learning how to do this and she stumbled and fell and or did all the things that you, you do when, you, when you're starting something new, but eventually learned a really good system. And as, and as her health came back and she now has good mobility and she has full, full use of her body now, but for about two or three years, she was unable to do anything except trade shares. So she learned systems and by creating really good systems that supported her inability to respond, she couldn't be on there all the time. She had to set up alerts and structures and systems. And this is well before the technology is as good as it is today. And so she fell into this role. She was definitely an accidental business owner. And now what she recognized is her system that she set up that created the right foundations for her long-term success actually turned into an online course, which then took the pressure off her to have to deliver face-to-face. -face. So she now runs a one of the only trading company programs in Australia that actually provides lifetime support for trading. And you actually trade with her and her partner for you know every month and they take you through the systems that she developed, which is all automated. So she spends and teaches you how to spend 30 minutes to an hour every week learning to trade shares so you can sit back and enjoy that. So sometimes when we structure the business, it's accidental. And sometimes it's deliberate. And for us, as we are planning to, thankfully, none of us are unwell today, I don't think, if we can sit back and go, how do we want it to look? Let's not wait till an accident happens. Let's not wait till we can't actually do what we want to do. Start planning your future now. And that's the biggest lesson that I ever learned in starting this business. And watching other people stumble makes it, reminds me how important that decision was. So the second thing we talked about, and there's a couple of people who talked about one of the biggest challenges, how do we share the message? How do we connect with people? So the second lesson that I learned is to be really clear on what you offer and try to avoid shiny things. I'm a mad fan of shiny things, particularly when it comes to technology, which we'll talk about in a minute, and particularly when it comes to I can do everything, so why don't I? Now, I imagine all of us on the in the call have had that time, whereas I can do five things, so what, yep. That's it, Nick. Let's find shiny things. I can do it. Someone asked me to do it. So I now offer that as a service. And suddenly you start the business and I've got an amazing finance broker who I know who I work with. And so she just, she wanted to do finance broking and she wanted to specialize. But then someone said, can you do this? And can then could you do that? So her business card has gone from the one line thing that she wanted to do to the whole back of her business card covers the 15 things that she now does. Not because that's what she wants to do, wants to do, because people asked her and it became shiny, right? We want to follow the shiny things. So the second lesson that I want to talk about is focusing on your superpower, your point of difference, and not somebody else's. It's so easy in the current age and with social media and everything being online for us to follow someone else's dream, to look at what someone else is doing and saying, I want a piece of that, that's who I want to be, and we start doing what they do. 
But often what happens if you try to be somebody else is it fails because it actually isn't designed for you. So even if your superpower looks exactly the same, feels exactly the same and has the same outcomes as somebody next to you, don't follow what they do. Sit back and say, is that what I need to do for me? What's my point of difference? If it happens to be the same as the person next to you, that's great. But don't just simply blindly follow someone else's model because you think it's going to work for you because often it won't. Um, when I was in learning and development, I used to say to people, um, when we talked about best practices, excuse me, we talked about what is best practice. So we talk about companies come out every day with best practice processes and best practice methodology. But if we unpack those best practices, they actually only fit that company that has all these incredible resources and has all these tools and, and funds as mentioned earlier to be able to deliver this best practice. And if you don't actually tick all those boxes, it's very hard to try and implement or mimic somebody else. And often you don't know what's happening under the, the lid of their business. They might be saying online that they're earning this or they're doing that. But when we open the doors and look behind the curtain, if you like, we see that they're actually not and they're scrambling like ducks underwater, right? So start by asking, what do you want to do? What is your offer? And what do you, what is your point of difference? And we all, and it's that USP, call it what you want. But when you find that, that point of difference, and for me lately, I've gone through that. Over the last four years, I've gone from consulting, I've done content management, I've done communications, I've done a whole range of things. And I've, and I've now moved to three very clear offers. I have a three-day retreat and a six-month coaching program. I have a content program and I have a business strategy program. They're three very clear offers that I can talk to my clients about. And I don't play in anyone else's lane. I create the lane for me. I create the box that I want to play in and say, come and visit me here, rather than always trying to find other boxes to play in. Does that make sense? So this is what I love. It's spend time working out your offer. That's the other lesson as part of the second lesson. So let's call this 2A, is spend time working out your offer. So often we just go to Mark and say, I'm going to charge this, I'm going to do that. And we haven't thought about the time or the resources that we need to do. And this is why I love when I've listened to, and I often watch Nick's webinar on Facebook, because when we look at the tools and strategies that he offers, that he suggests and talks about, what he's telling you is saying, there's lots of different ways to deliver your, deliver your offer to support your business but you need to find the one that works for you. It's because there are lots of different shopping carts. There are lots of different web providers. There are lots of different ways that you can check your site. So it's about saying what works for you, what's going to fit your budget, your time, your effort, and is that going to allow me to grow into the business that I want to do? And I always start with, on, with technology online. We In our business, we have a range of uh, technology that we do. And, and every month, I actually sit down with my VA and we actually review it and say, have we used all the tools this month? Are they working for us? Is it actually supporting the delivery of my offer or is it just a nice thing to have? And we did find at one point we had three different video editors and we thought maybe we should get rid of two because we really only use one maybe once a week. So we probably don't need those other two. But again, that's shiny things. So is what you're going to do supported by technology and does that actually support the delivery of your goods and services and isn't just something that you take because somebody else said you should. So focus on your superpower, your delivery and what's good for you and build your structure and business around that would be my second lesson. The third lesson, I know we're powering through this, is, oh, have I got to the third lesson? No. The third lesson is build systems to help you scale. And I could spend hours talking about this. In fact, when I run my coaching programs and my and my uh, my mastermind, this is exactly what we talk about: building systems to support what you do. So the key to long-term sustainability, whether you want to be an owner, an employee, or an operator, is the ability for your business to grow without you. So even if you want to be on the tools, you still want your business to grow in spite of you. If you're an operator, you want to create a team and a, and, a, and a team might call technology team. So you might have a whole range of systems that allow you to keep doing what you're doing at that something that suits you, but the business to grow. And definitely if you're at that, op, if that owner level, you want to build sustainable and legacy. And whether that's in revenue, whether that's in impact, however you choose to de define success, we need really good systems to do that. Now, systems come in a couple of different forms. The first one that people always think about is technology. So I always say to people, use technology wisely. 
don't just jump on the bag wagon at the moment i'm still struggling at the moment with clubhouse because you know i'm told oh, we need to get on clubhouse in fact we're talking about it this friday with a colleague of mine in our podcast and i'm like what is this clubhouse is that just something else that i now need to do so if you've got these great tools ask how they fit so this is just a snapshot and i'd love to know how many other other tools that i probably missed off here nick CRMs, marketing, finance, web, social media, scheduling, timesheets, time management, content creation. All these things can be found on an online form in an online system. Some of those can be found in one system. Some of them you might need two or three, or you could have 15 different systems doing these things. It doesn't matter how many you have, as long as they're working for you. So make sure you take the time, whether it's quarterly, six monthly, or just every year, so do an audit of your technology and say what's working for me, what isn't working for me. And remember, they should be able to talk to each other. And if they can't, at the very least, they need to be friends. And what I mean by that is they need to be able to integrate or have some connection because having multiple systems that don't work for you isn't going to work. And I know the work that Nick does in, when he's building websites, when he's creating systems for people, it's always about integration. It's always about how they speak to each other to improve what you're doing, not provide resistance. And also the expenses in, the expense involved in technology can be astronomical when you get into it if you actually want a different piece of technology for everything. So we want to be really smart about how we do that. And the way we do that is we look at building strategies. So everything we do in business, everything we do in life, in fact, is about strategies. It's about organizing your time and keeping on track. So right now I'd like to ask people, what, how many pieces of technology in your business, when you're looking at the structure of your business, how many pieces of technology do you currently have and how many do you actually use? Nick, you're excluded from this because it's part of your gig to know all of them. So you have all of them, but that's okay. So for other people, how many pieces of technology do you have and how many do you actually use, let's say once a week? Take a second to think, oh, you can, you can say that loud, yeah? So Jane's thinking. Are we going counting? Yeah, program systems, whatever that means to you, Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> Great answer, Jane. I love it. Five that I know of. <laughs> Brilliant. So for us, when I did the audit last time, we had, I think, 10. 24. Wow. Nice, Kerry, too. We've done a lot of work with you, Kerry. So we're trying to streamline from the start. So that's good. I'm glad it's only two at the moment. Three, perfect. About eight? Yeah, see? Great comment, Victoria. You've got eight, that you've only, but you've, sorry, I've got eight, but some of them I've not learned how to use properly and you spend a lot of money on them. Yes. So there's a really quick snapshot. If you think about, in fact, one of my colleagues and I did an audit. I just said, why do you have so many pieces of technology? She did a technology audit because I was like, let's go let's look at this. And it turned out that she was spending something around $950 a month on technology. And when she did the audit and streamlined it, it dropped it down to about $550 a month of stuff that she actually needed. And so imagine that $400 a month in your business that you get back, that's a significant gain over many years into your business. So that's what, so when we start to look at strategies for your business, what, we're, what, what I'm really asking is, What's, what are you doing now that's actually blocking your growth? What are you doing now that's actually limiting and hampering your success as a business? And sometimes it's not what we do, it's the tools that we use or the fact that we have things that we don't use and we rely on that we don't actually integrate well into our systems. So that this lesson three about using technology is so important around making sure that what you have is working for your business, helping you grow your business. So whether it's choosing your online platform for your course, so I do a course creation program because I'm a content writer and we talk about how to write your course. We don't talk about the technology in writing the course because that's the second piece, getting the content first. And then we say, how do we get that online? What does that look like? Is it through Zoom? Is it through Facebook groups? Am I going to buy LearnDash or another membership platform or Kajabi or one of the other ones that we can use to build? It? And what does that look like for us? And then, so we ask these questions, but strategies help us organize our time and keep us on track. So last couple of things, last points, and I've actually, I'm going to finish a bit earlier, Nick, I hope that's all right. We can have a chat. Um, is that systems are the difference between you hitting your goals and going around in circles. 
So when, whether it's a goal, whether it's a revenue target, what we need to look at doing is saying, what are the systems that I have in place today that's enabling me to grow? So if we talk about that elusive six-figure number, I've talked in vague terms about how to grow your business, but the lesson around this one was critical to me and it actually was a game changer. So I recognized I had amazing goals. I knew what I was doing and I kind of thought about the actions that fit to that, but I didn't have any framework to, frameworks and systems to actually support early on the delivery and the, and the implementation of those systems to enable me to hit the goals. So what I did is I sat down and said, what do I need to do on a daily basis? What do I need to do in my business daily, weekly to actually deliver on my goal, on my revenue target, to grow my clients, to get more people to know who I am, to increase my prices, to become more efficient. And they are actually all systems. Often when we talk about systems, we get a little bit scared and we think technology, but systems start on paper. They start with mapping out what you need, where you're trying to go from A to B, focusing on the things that we need to do every day, and then looking at how technology can support us to deliver that in a more effective and efficient way. When we start with technology, we're starting at the wrong end of the stick. It's kind of like trying to sweep with it with the handle instead of the broom. We want to actually think about what is what we're putting into the system, what it's going to do, what the outcomes we're going to achieve, and then we layer on the technology and we layer on the activities over the top of that to make sure there's efficiency and effectiveness and that it fits our business goals. So what we do has to actually match our activities and everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So this could be from scheduling your time. It could be creating daily habits. There's a whole range of systems that we can use here. Uh, for me, I do the Eisenhower matrix. Anyone who's listened to me speak, I always talk about the Eisenhower matrix. It's a 1950s model from General Eisenhower on how he made decisions every day that were critical to his business. And that's how we schedule his time. So we created a model off the back of that that talks about what we need to do first and how we prioritize our time. Part of that in my day-to-day -day work includes technology, includes the systems I do, includes the conversations I have with my teams and the work I need to do on my business. But by doing that and having a very clear system, I don't have to get over, I don't get overwhelmed in my business. I don't feel stressed about what I have to do because I know it's scheduled and planned. Sure, I have lots to do and I often go, yeah, I've got lots to do, but I know that it's in a planful way and I know that I can approach it and hit all the tasks that I need to and therefore hit those revenue goals. The biggest challenge for me when I, as I was growing in my business was that going from an eighty-five dollars to $90,000 business to earning that over $100,000 revenue business. So we're talking, and when we start to get that point and then you start getting scale and then you start getting growth and it compounds. So what we're doing, the difference is the system that you do. The difference between going from a hobby to a successful business and then scaling are how you manage and structure your business from the day that you start. You get those rights, you get those right from the start and the business will actually be limitless. So the last thing I want to leave you with is we focus on what we need to do each day, each week and each month. And we do that by understanding the inputs that we need for the business and that allows us to flow through the outputs. So if you're an online business, that's about how many clients we want to talk to, how many sales that we need to get through, what we need to do to gain engagement, how do we build uh, you know, engagement through content, Facebook ads, Google, um, looking at Google and SEO, how do we actually maximize those inputs to enable us to grow our success at the other end? Every single thing you do in your business impacts your success as a business. That is my, it's not, not listed as a lesson, but the fourth lesson really is everything you do impacts your business. Not today, but it impacts in the future. So if you decide not to that today, you're not going to use that piece of technology, learn how to do it, upload a course, make a Facebook Live, attend this event. Everything we do impacts your ability and your likely success in your business. So you need to focus on the inputs you need to do, the systems and structures to support that, and then create those foundations that allow you to scale and grow as you need to with your business. So before I just might finish up, any questions or about any of those things that I've talked about tonight? Comments, questions, queries? It's a very quiet group tonight, Nick. It is, isn't it? <laughs> I, was, uh, I was just going to circle back around to the question I think Victoria had, uh, where she said, sure, but you need funds, the money yes. issue. Yeah, great question. Um, did you want to talk about, you want me to raise, talk about that or you talk first? No, no, you talk about it. I'm, um, yeah, I'm sure that uh, I could uh, do with some more help with some of my money as well. So 
money is a really funny thing. Um, I was really scared when I first started about spending any money in the business. I was like, you know, how do I minimize my expenses as much as possible and maximize that revenue and, and so that I can actually grow the business. So the first thing that I learned, and this is going to sound a little bit airy-fairy, but the first thing that I learned is I recognize that the tighter I hold my money and the, the less I spend on the business to grow it, the less money I was actually going to make. And I know it sounds, you know, not, not intuitive, but by holding on and not giving, my, giving that space to grow, it actually limited my opportunity. And a really great example of that is when I first started the business, I had I was, I literally started the business. I'd been, un, um, I'd been unwell and had been out of work. I'd been not in an employed role for about four months. I'd gone to Barcelona on literally everything that I had. And I came back, this is quite legitimately with $43 in my bank account, waiting for my final payment to come from my company that I just left. And I was going, what the heck am I going to do? And I said to my partner, I'm going to find an accountant to set up my business structure. We're starting the company because that's what I need to do. And I have absolute faith in it. So when I found an accountant who knew that I hadn't started the business, knew I didn't have any business, he said, that's fine. We'll do the work and we'll invoice you in 30 days. So I actually didn't have the funds in my account when I made that leap to actually create the company. Now, I know for some people that's uncomfortable for people and they don't want to do that. But when you build a relationship with, with accountants and lawyers and people who can support you, they want to support you succeed as well. So they gave me some really great advice. They helped me structure the company early on. And then as soon as I started, I felt like I had this confidence to actually succeed. So that's just that first bit. So don't let your fear of not having money stop you spending money on things. The second thing for that is you don't actually need a lot of money to set a company up or even to, you know, to promote your business and use a lot of these tools. I know a lot of the tools that Nick shows are free. They always have a free base model and then you can either upgrade to the, to the other areas. So by looking, always starting on the base model, looking to see if the features and benefits of that program work for you and then look to embed and build it into your program. So there's nothing that says you can't run your business on free trials of programs. I've got a colleague who is a digital marketer and I know that they only spend, they only probably have two or three uh, of the more detailed programs that they need to run their business that are paid. The rest of them are actually on the standard, you know, the, the small business or the enterprise, uh, the lower end enterprise that actually don't require cost. And when it comes to starting a company, you can actually go to ASIC yourself and I think it's about $450. And as long as you have a, a, a traditional um uh, constitution which you can download you can actually start a company with a business bank account so you don't actually need a lot of funds to start what you do need is the courage and confidence to do it and to be able to say you know what have faith in the business that you have and your your ability to do whatever it is you want to do if you start there and and I and I know you know this is I'm not a woo-woo person Nick knows me this is not my normal space to be in but I know from experience that when you when I actually focused on what I was doing well and just started talking to people about what I did really well, people were attracted to me and I got clients. And then the next client came because that client was there. And then the next client came because they knew the first client. And that will start happening. Now, the same thing happens in an online world. It's just called social proof. It's not called referral. So that would be my kind of tip. Don't be fearful. Be, be you know, be mindful of your money and make sure that it fits within your what you can do. But you can always run a business on a shoestring. Thousands of people have done it and grown into million dollar businesses. Yeah, hundred percent. And can I just add something to that as Please. well? Um, one of the things I do see and being in the tech world and uh, having access to all of these tools and bits and pieces, mm. uh, it's really tempting to want to use the, uh, the best tools to launch your program, to, uh, you know, to create your products and that sort, of, uh, that sort of thing, but you actually don't need that. They are sort of generally nice to have. You can launch a program and you can make sales uh, on something as simple as a telephone and uh, messenger. Yeah. So uh, you, you don't need a fancy sales page. Uh, you don't need that Thrive Cart shopping cart. Uh, you don't need any of those tools. You really just need uh, you and your wherewithal and the ability to, um, you know, to talk and communicate with people. So that's that's the first thing that I found. Yeah. And a lot of these tools that I share are great to have when you start to really get some scale and, and really start to move ahead in your business. Yeah. There's, there's really two, there's, yeah, there's two questions I generally ask myself, uh, you know, when spending money. The first thing is, um, if I spend this money, will it make me money? 
So I'm looking at, you know, what sort of return can I get? So if I'm, if I'm going to invest in this tool, let's say Thrivecart, for instance, if I'm going to invest in that, how much money am I going to make with that? Is that going to help me to make more money than, than not having it? Yeah. And then the second question I ask is how much time can I save? So is this something that can save me time so that I can then, uh, you know, dedicate that time into, say, uh, other income generating programs or doing something for the business that's uh, really going to grow, uh, grow the business? Yeah. Really great. And a really simple example of that is a lot of people start selling their product online using PayPal. And when you start that subscription model, PayPal is great, but subscription is a bit tricky. I just moved to Stripe. And the second I moved to Stripe, because I have a I have a recurring uh, coaching program that I do, which I was going to have a quick chat about. And that coaching program is a monthly payment. And so now through the integration between WooCommerce and Stripe, it just comes into my account every month and I don't have to think about it. So by paying this fee and a slightly higher than Stripe, which I think it might be the same now as PayPal, but setting up the system and going, that's going to work for me because yes, it may cost me a little bit up the front with the programs I need to do it, but actually at the back end, I'm saving probably an hour a month have, without having to manage those invoices and those processes anymore or, or paying someone else to do it. Um, some really great questions there about setting up companies. I'm not an accountant or a lawyer, so I can't give you any advice about what's better or worse. My choice to start a company was in relation to two things. One, um, the uh, protection for the family. So it's arm length, uh, arm's length from myself. So it's actually a separate entity as a company. It's where I want to grow into. So when I have staff and, and, and teams, as I grow into it, it's a better structure than a sole trader for me. Um, but secondly, I get to pay company tax and not personal tax. So depending on how you structure your business, it actually allows you to still pay the required amount of tax, but it min minimizes in most cases your tax liability. And that's the reason I chose. But if you want to ask for information around um, which is better for you, the ASIC website has some really great information, as does the tax office. And there's people actually who will actually talk you through the, the benefits and pros and cons of whether company or sole trader, trust, partnership, all those other things. Um, and they'll actually help you have that conversation um, if you actually call the tax office. Strangely enough, there are people there who will actually talk to you. Um, so really worth doing. Um, if I may, I just want to finish off with two things. I've talked a little bit about it. Um, two coaching programs that I run. These are my monthly coaching programs. They're bi-monthly coaching. So we do a coaching program, coaching every fortnight. And then I we do a one-on-one. -on -one. So we combine Zoom coaching with a one-on-one -on -one call as well. Um, and we talk through all those things about messaging. We talk about um, how to plan your content and really how to get traction with your online content, but also things like proposals on how to structure documents and other activities like flyers and marketing materials. So we talk about the whole elements of content for your business. And on the flip side of that, we look at the messy middle. So I talked about the messy middle early on. We all sit in that space. So we basically work every fortnight through practical and actionable, actionable strategies that helps you move your business forward. They could be systems, they could be structures. Sometimes it's a different mindset conversation, but most of the time we're focusing on really simple actions and processes that you can employ and implement into your business to help you grow and scale. If you're interested in any of those things or want to have a chat to me about anything I've talked about tonight, I'd love you to book a, a chat with me. I love talking clearly. Um, so jump on a call. That could be just to ask questions about what I've talked about or to learn more about my coaching programs, whatever you would like. Um, so feel free to do that. And I'm done. I'm going to stop sharing, Nick. Awesome. Um, I've just got a quick question. Yeah, please. At some point, is that okay? Um, just around the um, plan your day, plan your week, plan your month. Yeah. Um, I use a tool called AnyDo to do that. But I've found that I'm one of these guys who continues to do whatever I'm doing despite what I've got planned. And so I've got like 90 things on there to do and they just never, it never seems to go down. So is there like a tool, do you stick to your, your plan, your daily plan hour by hour or do you sort oh, of no. do you to manage it or how do you do it? Really great question. Thank you for asking, David. Um, so I, as I said, I use the Eisenhower matrix, which is my, which is for a better term, the jumping off point for my day. So each week I plan and I actually have a little PDF that I'm happy to um, share. Nick, if you're happy for me to do that, I'll, I'll, I'll send it through. Um, I might send it through to you guys and you can share it to the group. Um, oh, it's, 
Yeah, I actually have a little, uh, the Eyes Down Matrix is great. I've got a, a version that actually is ready to use. So I'll send you the little gold setting one that I've done. Um, yeah, if you put yes, please, and then I'll get the details off you after, um, or you can reach out to me on my email. Um, so back to your question, uh, David. So the way that I do is the Eyes and Hour Matrix is about a priority setting. So the first thing Eyes we need to- Eyes Matrix. Yeah, so, okay. I, but I will say, I call it the do first matrix. It's much easier to think of do first. So there are four things you do. Um, we write a list of what we need to do, which is called current business. That's stuff that keeps the lights on and keeps us clients happy. Future business, which is stuff that we need to do to grow our business. So training, learning, scaling, all those things. And then I have the stuff called the other stuff or the extras or leftovers or personal business. So I have all those three things I do once a week for everything that's coming up that's in my brain because I'm clearly a little manic. So I dump it all on a bit of paper in three columns. Then what I do is I do a crosshair that does the do first, the schedule, the delegate, or I don't do. So what I focus okay. on is what is critical right now? What do I need to schedule into my diary? And that's the stuff that actually has time sensitive stuff. What do I delegate to someone else? And I had this conversation with someone yesterday who was talking about, I don't have time to do it. I'm the only one in my business. And I said to her, can your daughter go and research stuff on Barbies for you? And she's like, yeah, she's 14. I'm like, then why are you doing it? Yeah. So she, but she hadn't thought about actually getting support. And what delegating means is looking at the resources around you. So what this exercise does is it actually gets you to start thinking about what do you need to do? What can you schedule that needs to be done in the next week or two weeks? What do you need? What needs to be done, but you don't need to do it. For mine, it was bookkeeping. For mine, it was do, actually doing my social media posting. I write the content, but I don't do yeah. I don't do my images anymore. So this little exercise allows you to do that. And so what happens is you get freedom back in your day, but it also schedules your time in a way that still allows someone like you and a little bit of me who doesn't want to be holding to the 9, 10, 11, 12 to have freedom because I know what needs to be done and then everything else gets done when it needs to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that actually sounds pretty good, yeah. At it's really it's cool. So I will send you through that. Um, yeah, pop your, pop. if you say, do it this way, say yes in the chat. And I'll see what, and I'll ask um, Nick to send me your emails and I'll send it through to you after. I think there's quite a few yeses in the chat. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there's a few yeses in the chat. Yes, there is. Wow. Thank you. Well, I'll call, I'll send that through to everyone well, by the looks of it, everybody. <laughs> Maybe say no if you don't want it. Maybe that will be easier for <laughs> Lorena and Nick. Thank you so much. I had so yeah. much fun sharing that information. Please let me know, Nick, if you, if I can do any more or if you have any more questions. Right, uh, I was just going to say, I use the uh, university method of um, management and uh, that's where you get the assignment due at the beginning of term and then you do it uh, the night before, starting at about 10 o'clock <laughs> and finish at 5 a.m. in the morning just before it's uh, ready to be handed in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've just popped my email address in the chat, so if you want to reach out to me, feel free to. Thank you. Thanks very much. Awesome. Nick. Any other questions? Maybe one. I don't. I'm not going to, I don't want to take up too much time. But actually, this one's for unique. Just quickly, you guys were talking about the, all the technology and whatever. Do you have on? Um, because I haven't actually been to one of your nights on on technology. Is there? Do you have um, like a list of these things that you use? Because I've got sort of a separate accounting system and CRM and all that other stuff, and even just spreadsheets that I use. Um, do you have a list of these? sites and different things that you know you recommend or that you know like like you say um are friendly with each other do i have Mine's a list i have got hundreds of apps that'll get you lost for weeks and weeks and weeks <laughs> um we do have Love a list uh, in fact uh, we're, we're uh, just in the throes of putting it all together uh and um so i think uh, I'm just trying to think. JM is on the, uh, uh, he's one of my uh, team that is here and he's putting together our websites, listing out all of the apps that we've uh, talked about over the past three years. Oh, and, really? Uh, cool. they'll, they'll all be on the website. So we'll have them on the website. They'll all be filterable. So you'll be able to filter them by CRM or by, uh, you know, bookkeeping system or by whatever. So it's, um, I think we're only sort of, uh, oh, I was going to say days away from launching, but um, I'll probably be, uh, um, uh, sort of a hold over the coals of us so it's just days away. So let's say in the next couple of weeks, we'll have that ready and then we'll be able to shoot out a link so everyone can uh, have a look at it. And then you've got all these apps at your fingertips. That's great. So sit tight on that one for now then. That's it. And if you've got anything specific, feel free to uh, go to Business Owners Smashing Online, the Facebook group. Feel free to drop in a uh, 
uh, a question in there asking for a recommendation and uh, I or one of my team or someone will come back and answer you. Thanks, Nick. Oh, we've got a comment in here oh. that says from Christine, thank you. Doing a half hour oh. chat with Jenny is well worth it if you want to take oh. the opportunity. So there you go, good endorsement there. Thank you, Christine, that's really kind. Awesome. All right, any other questions, comments or anything before we uh, head into the uh, last stretch for this evening? Thinking. <laughs> All right, well, what we'll do is... If, if I go back, um, if anybody does want to organize a chat with me, if you send me an email to that email address to say, hey, I want to chat, I'll send you a booking link and we can organize a 30 minute. I call it, let's get to know each other so we can just chat about stuff. Perfect, perfect, yeah. excellent, excellent. So, um, well, with that in mind, um, we do have a, uh, a door prize for today as well. So for all of you uh, people that uh, stuck through with, uh, through with us and, uh, you know, how could you not? Because uh, I've got a few notes here about some of the things I need to do to improve uh, some of my time management, what I'm doing in business. So thanks for that, Jenny. Um, but you do have a door prize tonight. So tell us a wee bit about that. So what I'm offering is a one hour business strategy and review session with me. Um, they're normally, they're, they're normally a, an hour to, to 90 minutes. We go through your business, talk about what you're doing, what you're trying to achieve, look at your goals and look at those three things around clarity, structure and process just to get those foundations right. Um, and I, predominantly to identify any of the blockages that you might have in your business that's stopping you growing, um, whether that's physical or otherwise. And then we basically find a strategy and start looking at action planning. So we do that. It's quite a jam-packed hour or so. Um, and we do that via Zoom um, or Teams. And so that's normally valued at $500. And that's a, a door prize for tonight. Awesome. All right. So uh, anyone want to win that? That'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got our special uh, wheel of names up here. And so uh, we'll, uh, we've got all of your names in there. Uh, we'll hit the wheel and spin it. And remember, you have to be here to win it. So uh, if anyone's not here, bad luck. They miss out. We draw it again. All right, let's spin the wheel. Drum roll, please. And we have a winner, Bing. Dougie, Missy Pecker, are you here, Dougie? Hello, Dougie, you here? I can see yes, a wave. He is, he is yes. there indeed. Excellent. Yeah, Nick. Awesome. All right, well, congratulations there, Dougie. This will be awesome for your uh, business as well, too, because I know where uh, you're sort of uh, trying to, or some of the things you're trying to do. So uh, uh, Jenny will be able to give heaps of clarity. So uh, that's awesome. Thanks, Thank you, Jenny. Pleasure. All right, Thank so it might be, might be worth, uh, Dougie, if you just drop your um, email. email and phone number, whatever, into chat to uh, Jenny and uh, you, you guys, you, you can hook up together. All right, so thanks once again, Jenny. Uh, that was oh, awesome pleasure. having you on tonight. You. So uh, that was excellent. Uh, so um, uh, a couple of things here. We've got uh, uh, office hours tomorrow as well. So office hours is at uh, 10 o'clock. Australian Eastern Standard Time, which is what's that, uh, 11 o'clock in uh, the uh, Southern Eastern States. Uh, what's that, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. I've got to count on my fingers. 1 o'clock in New Zealand. Um, and um, it's some other time in Australia as well. But if you um, jump onto the uh, Zoom link into it, which are in, in chat at the moment, you can certainly book in for that. Now, office hours, for those that haven't been before, it's no agenda. There's no uh, speaker or anything like that. It's an opportunity for uh, people in business like us to have a chat about some of the uh, you know challenges online. Maybe you want a recommendation. Maybe you just want to hang out because uh, it's a great thing to do on a uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, but we do have some really good discussions on there and some uh, interesting uh, topics that come up. So feel free to join us for that uh, tomorrow at, um, at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Also, we have the recurring revenue uh, challenge, which we are into day two of that uh, as well, too. So it's not too late to join if you're interested in thinking about how you can uh, implement uh, recurring revenue in your business. Uh, then uh, we've got 13 strategies. We probably won't get through them all over the week. Uh, so this is held at 11.30 to 12.30 uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time uh, from Monday through to Friday. So we finish at Friday this week. So it's every day through to uh, Friday. Nick, 
Yes. I, uh, just sorry, in regards to that, I wasn't able to make today's. Um, the There will be a replay of today's. For those that are registered for it, there is yes. a replay there. We have a link for that, which we'll send out at the end of each day. Yeah. Uh, and I think the replay video is up on the site now. So you'll get an email about that too shortly. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, so if, you, so if you've missed the first two days and, uh, you know, it's not too late, you can watch the replays. So it's only an hour and it's quite practical as well. So you get some things to do so that you can start to implement some of these strategies right away. Uh, some of them are, are simple strategies to implement. Others are a little more complex and we walk you through uh, some of those as well. But well worth coming along to uh, because, um, you know, having uh, some form of recurring revenue really smooths out some of those uh, cash flow uh, bumps. Um Yes, it is recorded as well to Victoria. All right, and the link for that is in the um, in the chat. Uh, the other thing too is uh, the replay of tonight. Uh, we will have that up on the Smash Go YouTube channel. It should be up there tomorrow. So if you missed it, or if you know someone else that should have uh, been here or, or would like to uh, see it, uh, send them along to the Smash Go uh, YouTube channel. Best thing to do when you get there is to subscribe. And then you'll get the notification when the video gets loaded up there. All right. Um, okay. Can we give an example of a strategy? Are you asking about recurring revenue strategy there, Victoria? I think you are. Yes. All right. Simple strategy. Uh, let me think. Which one? Um, oh, to, uh, what we did. Uh, no, I'll talk about this one here. ClickBank. So ClickBank, uh, for those of you uh, that haven't heard of it, is, a, uh, is really an affiliate site. So it's a place where you can go to sell other people's products and get a commission off it. So, so that's one way to use it. Another way to use it is, is do what I did. Uh, I created a program last year. In fact, uh, I did five days of a VA success blueprint challenge, which was on Facebook. It was an hour each day. I packaged that uh, up into a course, which I have now listed on ClickBank. Uh, to uh, to sell for um, 97 bucks. So now I've got other people out there promoting my product uh, on ClickBank. Uh, it was um, and so those of you that went along to that, that was really an introduction to the main program that we're offering. But I was able to turn that introductory piece into a mini course in its own right as well too. So um, so I've got people out there promoting that. The great thing about that there too is it's not only a recurring revenue generator, it's also a lead generator as well too because every sale that you get off it, you get the uh, name and email address of the person and uh, the fact they've bought that program means that uh, they're probably interested in some of the other programs that we've got as well too. So it's a great way where you get paid to get a lead. So that one serves a dual purpose. So that's just uh, one of the examples. But um, yeah, come along, uh, you know, if you can make it along or if you, if you want to register to get all the replays, uh, well worth it because we'll, we'll run through a whole number of strategies as well too. All right, I think that's all we've got for uh, tonight unless anyone else thinks that I've forgotten something. I don't think so. All right, well, thanks again, uh, Jenny. Really appreciate your uh, time tonight. Thanks everyone for uh, coming along tonight. Look forward to seeing some of you tomorrow and look forward to seeing uh, some of you again uh, next week and seeing you online. Have a great night. Thank Thanks, you. Good night, everyone. Bye.